Dr. Kellab Charles, welcome to All Things Men, and thank you for being on our show. You are known as a digital protection expert. You're also the creator and executive editor of securityorb.com. What is Security Orb? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me on here. Uh, Security Orb is a platform as well as an organization that works on the awareness of information security, digital privacy, internet safety, as well as STEM related topics. And we do this in a number of ways. One, for example, uh, we put out publications pertaining to issues uh, in security, privacy, or internet safety, and provide some remediation factors of how we can uh, fix those particular problems. Uh, we also do a lot of public speakings. We'll go to uh, venues pertaining to kids when it comes to internet safety, uh, as well as uh, is, uh, events with governments. Uh, one of the key things that Security Orb uh, does is that we deal with everything from national security issues all the way down to video games and social media type issues. We've heard a lot about protecting Pete oneself from hackers and the like, but this is an ongoing problem. How has it evolved uh, from uh, like five years ago to now, uh, how have the bad guys evolved in trying to find your information? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it, it has a twofold response to it. One, uh, it really hasn't changed too much. Uh, many of the same techniques that they were doing five years ago, they're still able uh, to implement those particular techniques to have uh, systems get compromised and people do things that they normally wouldn't do. Uh, again, we have a lot of new entries coming into the digital world, and some of them might not have the exposure or the awareness of how to prevent these things from happening. And a lot of these particular techniques are becoming more sophisticated. Uh, for example, when we talk about phishing, um, you know, we're able to scrape a website uh, to look exactly like your bank website and send you an email saying, hey, we need you to log in. Uh, five years ago, this was a technique that was somewhat successful, but now with the scraping technology to be able to replicate the site to about 99.9% .9 of a legitimate site, uh, these things are becoming uh, very successful. And again, you know, by bringing awareness to these particular topics, we're letting individuals know certain things to check before uh, clicking a particular link or uh, logging in uh, to a particular website because an email kind of came in and said you should do that. We're back with Dr. Kellogg Charles of securityorb.com. You mentioned phishing. Uh, why is that not against the law? Um, I mean, technically, it is against the law uh, for the most part, uh, just like certain spam is against the law. Uh, the problem is, is that most of these phishing attacks and spam attacks are coming from overseas, uh, countries that do not have a cybersecurity policy or internet usage policy, um, you know, across the board. Uh, I don't want to mention some of these countries, but these particular countries you know, they operate in a silo. Uh, they do not have any advanced or mature type of laws or policies. So again, uh, individuals from those particular countries are able to uh, move and do these particular functions. Let's talk about this country. You mentioned STEM. What is STEM education and why is it important to us African-Americans? STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And basically what has been discovered is one, we have a shortage in the United States for individuals that have these particular uh, capabilities. Uh, for example, in the cybersecurity field and engineering fields, um, you know, currently in 2021, there's a 3.5 million 
job gap in cybersecurity because we do not have enough individuals to fill those positions. And what STEM does is help bring in the inventory to backfill and help fill these positions. Where do we find these individuals? Again, from the Black, Latino, Native American, and another big group is the females. You know, for a very long time, females have been left out of the uh, STEM ecosystem. So again, it's very important. One, it brings opportunities. It helps create uh, positions and additional jobs. Uh, it reduces the national security issue that we have because we don't have enough individuals in the United States to fill these positions. And it also provides another way for individuals to have employment and make a contribution to the world. Uh, doctor, I have kids and they're like this all day, looking at their phones. Uh, what advice can you give to other parents to help protect their kids from the bad guys? Now, one of the key things is that we emphasize that anything that you post on the internet stays on the internet forever. So think twice before posting pictures or information uh, that might come back to hurt you. I mean, we've had individuals that have missed scholarship opportunities as well as job opportunities because of the posting uh, that they do. And there are many organizations that HR companies hire that will go and scrape all your social media activities and provide that information to them uh, within a report. And uh, of course, passwords, uh, a lot of things that we see in the internet safety space is that individuals are sharing passwords with their friends, something goes wrong between that particular friendship and the other individual starts posting certain things that are detrimental to that individuals where they could get suspended, fired, or even in trouble with law enforcement. So we always say your password is yours. You need to keep it. And the only person that you should be sharing your password with uh, is your parents at the very least. And you know, there are tons of other information. I have it all on the securityorb.com website. Um, but the thing that we normally ask parents to do is, and again, we do have this particular form on the website, is create a contract, a contract as you as a parent and providing this asset to your child and the child using that particular assets where they have a set of rules and responsibilities that both of you guys will follow. And again, it usually helps with talking points uh, for the parents and it usually provides some information uh, to the child user knowing that, hey, we went over this and I know that if I do violate this, it's hard for me to say I didn't know about it. And those particular contracts, parent and child contract, usually serve a, you know, a very good mechanism to kind of help with the child to be a good digital citizen. Dr. Kellum Charles, once again, thank you for being with us and thank you for uh, um, your insight and your um, just information. I, I appreciate that. All the best, my friend anytime. And again, thank you for having me on and uh, have a great day.